<laughs> Hi, it's Fred. Listen, I can't go on like this. I need you right away. I know it's just, just for a few weeks more, but I can't make it without you. All right, I'll try. But just hearing your voice makes me feel a lot better. Right. Au revoir. <laughs> Until tonight. Where'd you come from? Where you think I come from? Under a rock. <laughs> you can't talk yourself out of this one, you two-time and beady head weasel ass <laughs> We caught you red-handed. Hey, Lamar, what's you screaming about? Well, Pop, we couldn't help overhearing your telephone conversation. Uh, just now? Mm-hmm. All right, Fred, out with it. Who is she? The zoo day. Please, Esther, let's give Fred a chance to explain. Right on. This could make my whole day. <laughs> Rada, why don't you go catch a bus in your teeth? <laughs> well, Fred, who were you talking with on the phone? I can't remember. Then I guess I have to refresh your memory. You was telling somebody I can't do without you. I need you. Oh, now I remember. It was the auto club. See, I was telling them that, that I couldn't start the truck. No, you got to do better than that, Pop. I just drove the truck a half hour ago. It's fine. Now, but what happens when, when it uh, conks out on the freeway? And this way, we'd be first in line for a tow truck. Lord have mercy. Is there no hope at all? Not for your face. <laughs> I really am trying to understand. Donna, I'm telling you, it's not what you think it is. Oh, no? Then explain this love poem in your handwriting. Oh, that's easy to explain. See, I was just uh, uh, testing out a new pen. Ha! Ah, <laughs> that's how you test a new pen? By writing gushy poetry? It was a fountain pen. Oh. <laughs> them jazzy threads you got. And all this talk about Bubba being the best man. I'll explain that. Well? How about tomorrow? <laughs> Fred, if there's another woman, just tell me. I understand. You know I'd never do anything to hurt you. That's hard for me to believe. Me too. Well, if you don't believe it, it's too bad. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Where are you going now? Well, looking at Esther's face remind me I gotta go empty the garbage. Come in. Ho, ho, ho. I bring you the greetings of Yuletide. Ho, ho, ho. Go down to the ocean side and stand in the low tide until the high tide commits suicide. You don't upset me, Fred Sanford. I have the feeling of Christmas. And the face of Halloween. <laughs> what are you starting something for, Pop? Hi, Aunt Esther. Listen, I'm in a hurry. Is there anything I can do for you before I leave? Just put these under your tree, sweetheart. Oh, uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> hey, here's a present here for you, Pop. You spend money on me? It's not the amount of money one spends on a gift, Fred. It's the thought behind it. Well, uh, what is it? Who cares? Look <laughs> if you leave and I'm going with you, honey, because your father's getting on my nerves. <laughs> I wouldn't get on no part of it. <laughs> You think you smart, Fred Sanford. But as my Spanish-speaking friends would say, adios, sucker. Yeah, that's my son. No kidding about it. I really do hope it's somebody we want to see. But you know what? Son, son of a gun. Yes, how you feel? I feel fine, Fred. And I ain't got no money to loan you. If that's why you asked me over here, I might as well go. No, wait a minute. I ain't asked you over here to borrow no money. If I wanted some money, I'd ask you over the phone. Hello there, Ernesto. Hello, Lamont. Hey, Pop, uh, I got to make a few pickups on the truck. I'll be right back. Okay, son. Uh, take it easy, son. 
Uh, be careful, son. Uh, bye, son. Now, what you call me over here for, friend? Uh, uh, sit down, Esther. Take the load off. <laughs> Let's get it over with, Fred. I don't like being alone in the house with an unmarried man. <laughs> If we were alone on a raft in the middle of the ocean, I'd rather kiss an octopus in the mouth. I wouldn't want you to kiss me. I'd rather be kissed by a snag or two jackass. Call St. Louis and get you one. Oh, go kiss your octopus. No. Well, listen, neither one of us don't have to worry about nothing like that. Now, now listen here, Esther. I just want to have a confidential conversation with you about Elizabeth. My sister Elizabeth? No, your brother Elizabeth. <laughs> of course, your sister and my wife. Now, look, Esther, this is just between me and you. Now, I want to know, uh, did, did Elizabeth ever dilly-dally while we were married? What's a dilly-dally? <laughs> well, you know what I mean. It's like, did she fool around? Fred Sanford, you ought to be ashamed to even let something like that come out of your heat in his mouth. <laughs> My baby sister was as pure as the driven snow. Yeah, but who was doing the driving? <laughs> Chicken picking minute supper. <laughs> Elizabeth was faithful to you until the day she died. Only someone with a foul mind and a foul mouth could come up with such a foul idea. Fred Sanford, you foul. <laughs> you a foul heathen. Oh. All right. Ha. You got that? Got it. Oh, hi, son. Uh, what you doing walking around talking to yourself like a fool? Fool. Come here, son. Huh? Don't move now. Don't move, just be calm. Don't get excited. And don't move to your right. Sort of ease over to your left, son, because I'm positive there's some fungus growing over there. Watch it, sucker. I don't have to take no insults from you. You sure don't. Just look in the mirror. Pop, do you always have to attack on Esther like this? Yeah, until they find some kind of cure for her. I just came over here to ask you if you want me to cook dinner for you and your friends. But now, I wouldn't do nothing for you or any of your old sinful friends. Lamont, you always welcome to my house. But you, Fred Sanford, you old fish-eyed fool. <laughs> Don't you ever set foot in my house again, huh, Glory? You old heathen. That's in your cave, you old bat. <laughs> my, my. Poor little couch. I know you haven't been dusted in years. My, my, poor little couch. I bet this is the first time you've been sat on by a buffalo. <laughs> poor little walls. I feel so sorry for you to have to stay here and hear the language that comes out of this house. Poor wall, you ought to be glad you ain't got no eyes to see who's talking to you. <laughs> You move your smelly old feet so I can get the nap up on the rug. Why don't you bend over so I can put my foot where to raise the nap on your head? <laughs> Why, you old bean eating, beady head, bow hugging donkey. It's, it take a jackass.
ass and no donkey. Why, you, you don't tell me. I'm going to tell you anything. They ain't going to tell me nothing. I'll knock you out, man. Don't tell me. I thought you two wasn't going to talk to each other. Well, son, I wasn't going to say a word, but she came down here and tried to turn my sofa and wall against me. Listen. No, you listen. You see these two fists here? They stereo. And I'm going to put them both in your ears. Right. <laughs>